Warning, this episode contains mentions of cultural appropriation as well as descriptions of death by machinery, sexual harassment, pedophilia, and glitches in the Matrix, as well as other content that may just not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Everyday Nightmares podcast. (sighs) You know exactly what I didn't do. Uh, yeah, I do. Where we discuss the true crime and the Kula Edulis. Nice. <laughs> Exotic and weird nuts. Bush mango. Mongo. Uh. Has both edible fruit and edible nut. Uh. This is a fucking Friday, specifically a friend oh! Friday. Happy fucking Friday where we tell you our... Where we talk, where we're friends. Uh, <laughs> we're two cats in a trench coat. You're our friend, and you give us stories. Hi. And we read them. Yes. Yeah? I'm Sammy Madden. Uh, and I was yawning. Nice to meet you, yawning. I, in my head, I was like, this is what Jacob would say right now. And then you said it, and I was like, eh. <laughs> It's also something I would say right now. And I'm Dan Sly. <laughs> uh, All right, rock, paper, rock, paper, scissors. scissors. Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. This happened last time. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Is that paper? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I am on a street. Yeah, you're on like three times, I think. I don't know which one I want to do first. Ooh. I have, I have some good ones this week. I'm excited. Should I... Okay. Should I end on the Colts one, or should I start with that one? Start. Okay. So this was emailed to us by the Colts, Colts, Colts podcast. Dear Sammy and Dan, my name is LaRue, she, her, and I am the co-host of Colts, Colts, Colts. So naturally, I had to share a culty slash paranormal tale from my past. I will premise the story by saying that I'm not even sure I believe in spirits, but I certainly should based on this story. So when I was 21, I moved to Atlanta with my then fiance, now ex. We got a little apartment in Decatur, and before we started moving our furniture in, we did what every young Christian couple does when they get a new place. Walk through the apartment room by room, casting all the demons out in the name of Jesus. That's a thing. (laughs) I suppose... Oh. I mean, I get it. Yeah, I mean, it's a little... Yeah. It, it's a it's fair a silly, thing to do if you believe in demons. Yes. Normal stuff. Being a woman, it was my role to do nothing but pray while my fiancé went around yelling for all the demons to leave. I'm sorry. Just imagining that is a little bit silly. I'm very sorry, but like... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I'm laughing at it. I shouldn't. <laughs> Okay, to me though, the thought of like someone just walking through a house yelling at demons while you're is praying. a funny visual. Yes, that too. That adds a layer to it. But just the yelling at demons part is the funny part to yeah, me. Yeah, like I would, the quiet little prayer I get, but to be like full on yelling at demons <laughs> in the house. When we got to our bedroom closet, I opened my eyes during the prayer and found myself looking directly at what I could only conclude was a demon. He was around three feet tall and just looked like a dark figure. He was completely 3D, not a shadow. I remember this feeling of sadness coming over the whole room and feeling like his name was Pit, which I could only think of. Kid Icarus. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) Boy. I had... Boy. If his name is Pit and LaRue feels sadness, fucking... It's definitely not Pit from Smash Bros. It's a pit of despair demon. And, well, she gets into it. Cool. In about two seconds. I also really like the name LaRue. I've never heard that, but it's a very beautiful name. It is. Randolph is the co-host. The other co-host. I also like the name Randolph. Me too. I had never experienced anything like that before. I wasn't afraid of him. I just felt really sad for him. As my fiancé kept on with his yelling, I remember a little pit turning and heading out the front door. Once he left, the room felt normal again, and I was so weirded out by the experience, I didn't even mention it to my fiancé until later that night. 
A few days later, we were chatting with our new landlord, and she mentioned that the woman who lived in the apartment before us was a traveling nurse who dealt with a lot of loneliness and oppression due to her job, and she had decided to put down more solid roots in her hometown. Somehow, that made the whole thing make sense to me. I was sure that the nurse had felt a lot of loneliness and sadness in that bedroom, and maybe it had manifested into our little demon friend. Or maybe it was the other way around, and he had caused her sadness. Or maybe I was indoctrinated by a cult and this was all in my head. Uh, one of her theories actually scares me because you know that whole thing with the publishing house I was involved in? Mm-hmm. Around that time, because of my stress, I, it might have been because of my stress, but I started feeling sleep paralysis to an extent that it felt like something that I couldn't see. It wasn't like a traditional sleep paralysis thing. Something that I couldn't see was in the room with me. Um, I have an addition to that where I used to know someone who claimed to be clairvoyant because I'm also not sure if I fully believe in this stuff. So, mm-hmm. eh, kind of iffy, but anyway, a clairvoyant person uh, said that they saw a best way to put it, a spirit run through the basement and the best way they could describe it is it was all flesh. Ew. And this person felt that the energy was negative and thought that it came from stress in the household. That it manifested itself into... Something else. That's a thing in yes. witchcraft, actually, where if there's no way for an entity to get in, if you're not taking care of yourself, that energy can manifest into something. Mm-hmm. They also did have witchcraft background, so I think... I like how we are, like, we're talking about this, and we're like, oh, we're running out of friend stories, we're running out of friend stories, and as we... We both have many. Yeah. <laughs> there are, like, I think I'm gonna finish telling LaRue's story, and then I'll say my, like, two little... Yeah. My little bits on, on ghost things. Alright, so, back into it. I will say, while the bedroom remained vibe-free for the rest of the time I lived there, something always lingered in the bathroom. I always felt like something far more sinister was watching me in the bathroom whenever I was in there and no amount of in the names of Jesus's was making it budge. It finally seemed to leave after my fiancé and I ended things. Oh. I thought that was very interesting as well. Uh, Yeah. Once he had moved out, I remember feeling completely at home in the apartment, finally. If you have any hot takes into this, I'd love to hear them. Anyways, you guys are the best. I can't wait to hear more content from you. See you in hell, LaRue. And again, that was the Colts, Colts, Colts podcast hosted by LaRue and Randolph. I love their show, and I am very thankful that LaRue wrote into me. See you in hell is their tagline. You should go listen to them. La- I- LaRue and Randolph, I just want you to know that Dan has been raving about you for two days <laughs> in our chats. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I mean... Oh my god! Okay, I didn't even freaking tell you about this, but I'm gonna go off now that we're on the topic. So, I was listening to, like... They only have, like, a few episodes right now, so I was, like, going back and listening to all mm-hmm. of them. And I finally got to one where Randolph is, like... He quotes Wine and Crime. He's like, oh, I was just gonna do, like, a little tribute to one of my favorite podcasts. And then he goes, nice pop! And I'm, like, sitting here freaking out, because... <laughs> Randolph, they're one of my favorite podcasts, too. I love them. Uh, that got me so excited. LaRue, I know you asked for, like, hot takes on it, and the only thing I could, like, uh, projection of your fiancé, I don't know, in the bathroom. Yeah, that's the only thing I could think, too. Like, there's no detail or anything on the kind of relationship the two had, but... And we're not asking I wonder you to, if like, it's like, spill. Like, not at all. And we don't want to overstep by any means, but I'm speculating, was it that, like, the relationship wasn't great, or was it projection of the fiancé himself? Not being a great person. Yes. But we don't have enough information, and again, we're not asking you to provide any more than you're comfortable with, so, but that's... Those are really the only hot takes that I have, though. Yeah, me too. But thank you, I really do appreciate your story a lot. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah, but then my other ghost stories. Uh Uh-huh. So one time, me and, like, four friends were sitting on top of my barn when we were in, like, middle school, 
I don't remember if it was four. I might have been the fourth friend. I don't remember. Didn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a joke. Okay, to an extent. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so we're sitting on top of the barn. And so we see out in the distance. There's like... The best way to describe it is like a large rectangle. We have like a lamp post kind of behind the barn. And so this was on the other side of that towards the end of the field, far away. We could not see it very well, but it was a large rectangle. Mm -hmm. And so we're just sitting there talking. No one makes note of it or anything. And then suddenly we see something white on the ground moving towards us. And we all freak out a little bit. It's just my cat. And so we look up and the rectangle's gone. What the fuck? That's it, but like... What the fuck? Yeah. It was really weird. And we all acknowledged it. We were like, you all saw that, right? There was a rectangle and then there fucking wasn't. And then there wasn't. Yeah, like we all recognized that it had disappeared. Um, another, I guess I have two more experiences that are kind of similar. So there was one time where I was walking from the barn to the house. I was like going out to take care of the animals at night by myself, just like, you know, doing the little dinner roundup, whatever. That sounded weird. Anyway, so I'm walking back in the house. It's dark out. I'm like passing the lamppost and I kind of like close my eyes and roll them into, into the back of my head. And then I like open my eyes again. And I see a crowd of figures around me for a couple seconds. Oh, God. Yes! That was wild. And then another time, I was driving to the next town over, and the fog, it gets very... It gets very moist in Michigan sometimes. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Uh, But we do have very humid summers. And so I was on my way to the next town over a lot of hills, a lot of, like, ponds and stuff on that road. And the fog had formed in such a way that it looked like apparitions of children in the road. Oh, God. That's, um... And it scared me so bad. That's terrifying, actually. Yeah, it really was. Those are my only ghost experiences. And they're not, like, indefinite enough for me to be like, yeah, ghosts exist now. But, like, those are my experiences. Yeah, they're so creepy. Yeah, creepy as fuck. So... Dan has the special stories. I just asked my stepdad and mom. Um, so, <laughs> this first one, they don't have titles. Uh, Make titles. None of mine, I mean, even that last one didn't have a title. Potential tractor murder. I made murder. titles for all the other. Potential huh? tractor murder. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, so, so how this story was my stepdad and I were in the car, right? And I expressed a, I was driving, and I expressed a fear of, like, large things that I knew could crush my head, like tires. And that's why I'm nervous around, like, semis and trucks, and if I get too close to a car and notice the tire, t- cars in general. Um, because I explained in the anime Shiki that there's a scene in which a vampire gets cornered in a field and gets her head run over by a tractor and i saw that on christmas eve years ago before i went to church in like a top 10 most brutal anime deaths watch mojo fucking thing (laughs) and after my stepdad made a dick joke because i said i was scared of big things and we have that type of giving each other shit relationship um i almost said it i could feel it (laughs) <laughs> I couldn't actually, but fuck you. Um, <laughs> and so after I express this fear and my stepdad has made a dick joke, he goes, and I tell him why I'm scared. He goes, I know a guy whose uh, wife that happened to. And I'm like, what? And so this is that story. Uh, there was uh, the guy whose wife's head got ran over by the tractor. It was his and his father's neighbor. The person of the wife claimed that the tractor was in gear and rolled forward while he was off of it. My stepdad doesn't really know what happened, but he did tell me that the neighbor actually spoke with his father and he seemed very upset that his wife had passed away. So... Uh-huh. And I know people can act, and but 
my stepdad didn't know anything about if it had, like, gone to trial or anything like that, uh, if he had been convicted or if it had been found to be in accident i just my thing about the accident thing is why was her head by the tires of a tractor yeah that's another thing too like what reason did she have for laying in front of a tractor essentially because if it goes out of gear it's not going very far yeah unless it's on the top of a very steep incline or decline it it would be inclined because it would still go down the incline okay cool yeah um (laughs) <laughs> but I didn't think about that as he was telling me the story, but yeah, like, what reason? And, like, how big of a tractor, too? Because there are some tractors where the tires aren't that large. Like, tra- certain tractors can have, like, tires as small as go-kart tires. Well, I feel like a go-kart... Maybe not quite that small, but, like, lawnmower? I feel like if you lawnmower? got a go-kart going, you could crush someone's head with it, probably, still. But... I'm going to get morbid and gruesome. If that's okay, I was I about feel to... like it would take take a little force. Yes. On a smaller tractor. But I was just about to call us a little bit thicker watermelons. Uh, our heads, specifically. So, yeah, depending on what type of tractor, it might take more force. Which would be intent. Yes. Right. I can do a follow-up on this case. That would be interesting, I can, actually. I, can look up, I would like, like that. Michigan guy kills wife with tractor. Or... You're gonna find some of the weirdest shit, dude. I'm gonna find a different type of tractor murder, and we can just talk about that. You are, yeah. and we're just gonna do tractor murders. That's all this podcast is for the rest of our lives. We are only talking about tractor crimes. Yeah, eventually this podcast will end, um, unless. But that is it. And this next story is from Kaylee Decker, our previous co-host. I was volunteering with my family at my church's harvest party event, aka Halloween party minus Satan. We had all dressed up in either medieval knights or princesses, and I was dressed in a beautiful pale blue dress, and I had silver flower accents. I felt truly beautiful. I was enjoying the night and mingling with others while I gave out candy and maybe ate some pieces myself. (laughs) When I went to go grab some nachos from the stand nearby, I was stopped by a man I had seen at my church before, but I didn't know him very well. He was dressed in a full Native American costume, headdress and all. Yay for cultural appropriation. Upside down smiley face. (gasps) Anyways, he puts his hand on my mid-back, which is the biggest fucking no-no to me ever. It's like... Never touch me there. It's like anything... Somehow, like... I can't explain it. Being touched there makes me shut down. Like, no idea what it is. It's just, like, it's, mm, it's a lot easier to control you from your lower back because it's smaller than it is your shoulders. Yes. Uh, too many men at concerts have done that to me, and, I mean, I can't right now because there aren't concerts, but normally I would attend metal concerts, so punching is not really out of the question. So, you can see where that's going. Um, that's another thing that really bothers me is there's, like, a lot of, like, fucking men at concerts towards other people just in general are fucking awful. Like, I've had a lot of awful experiences at concerts. I love concerts so much. But a lot of creepy men. I don't think I've come out of a concert without one creepy man experience. What the fuck? Um... Maybe not like my early ones, because I was seven when I went to my first concert. Mm-hmm. I, d- I didn't come out of that. I also saw Corbin Blue live once. Nothing weird came out of that. But, like, I was also with my parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, there's a whole, like, it's just a very common things, thing at concerts, and it's very upsetting. So if something is happening to you, fucking say something, because the people around you will support you and yell with you. And that person will be escorted out. I've seen it happen a lot of times at concerts. Mm-hmm. I will deck them in the face on your behalf. Mm-hmm. I hang out around the mosh pit. <laughs> so, if you don't want to be there, if you don't want to get punched in the face, don't be in the mosh pit. Anyway. Anyway, so, hand on my mid-back, and says to me in a low voice, quote, you're looking good tonight. How would you like to ride my pony? End quote. Which... I am disgusted. I'm upset. I have nothing else to say. I... I'm upset. Me too. With a look on his face that made my stomach turn, I knew something wasn't right about what he said, 
but I was too naive to fully know. So I knew I should probably get away from him ASAP, so I said no thank you and walked away as fast as I could. I was uneasy for the rest of the night. My parents asked me what was wrong, and when I told them, they looked very concerned. They told some of the leaders at the church, and the man was asked to leave. Upon further investigation of this man by the church leaders, they found other women had come forward, saying he had done slash said similar things to them. So two police officers that went to my church paid him a visit. When they arrived, one asked, quote, Sir, do you have a pony anywhere on the premises? End quote. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. The man said, no, he did not. And they confronted him about the situations, and he was then banned from returning to our church. Not much else could be done since there was no evidence he had done anything more than say things to women, but I'm thankful that I'll never see him or his pony again. Oh, and this one was titled The Phony Pony. Nice. Thank you to the person who sent that. Yes, thank you. Also, sorry you had to go through that. Um. Yes, that sounds like a very upsetting experience, and I am very sorry that you had to go through that. I am glad, though, that like, there were good on you for sharing that with adults, and I'm very glad that there were people to take care of the situation for you. Yes, very much so. We ready? Yes. This is from my stepdad again. He worked with a company before the one he was with right now, and this was, like, the... This is where this guy was from. Like, I think they worked at the same company for a bit. There was a guy who killed his wife on the road and kept her in the trunk with ice and parked next to the dumpsters to keep suspicion down, like the smell of his wife's rotting corpse. He drove- Stop! He drove to and from work with the body in his trunk. It took almost a month, three weeks- Or something along those lines for anyone to, like, notice anything because water kept leaking from his trunk because of the ice. Oh my gosh. Um, the way that he told me this story, I was like, hey, can I tell this first one about, like, the tractor on the podcast? And he was like, yeah, and if you want that one, there was this one about the guy, one about a guy on the, um road at the previous company with his wife and I was like is this the trunk story like I immediately remembered that he had told me before gosh was that it yeah for that one okay perfect thank you mm-hmm. and thank you stepdad for all of your stories today I appreciate it very much so I cannot actually put into words how much I needed those <laughs> And this story is from one of my friends, Kai. Thank you very much. They sent me, like, seven stories, and I am... Thank you so much. Like, our next episode is just gonna be Kai, you guys. (laughs) Like, we really, really appreciate it a lot. Alright, so, this one was titled Runner. So one time, we were using the Randonautica app, just because people have crazy experiences with it. I'll have to think of what happened with some of them, but this particular one... The app itself didn't lead to anything crazy, so we were getting back in the car to leave, and I was sitting in the passenger seat in the front, and my friend was driving, and Tree was sitting in the back, and it's probably 10 or 11 at night. We're in a residential area, and we're just kind of sitting there, pulled over next to a sidewalk. There's a jogger heading towards us, and for some reason, she's running in the middle of the road, which is kind of weird, but I guess it's late, so there aren't many cars. Yeah. You know, actually, that's But at the same time, like, it doesn't, it doesn't, like... There have abs- there was a time where it was probably three or four in the morning I was going to work, and it was pitch black out. There was a group of pe- four people taking up both lanes. What the fuck? I was coming around a corner. They're lucky I slammed on my brakes. It was- that was a bad situation for them to have put themselves in. There was- a- it's also not an area with very good lighting at all. Mm. But, like, just that they were in all- in both of the lanes, and I was coming around that sharp of corner where there are bushes so you can't see around the corner. Dangerous for cars, safer for getting snatched. Yes. If, yeah, if it's a well-lit area and there genuinely is no one around, that's fine, but 
the road that I took is the only road that goes out of town in that direction. And also... It's a main road. Also, you can't be wearing headphones if you're doing that at night. You need to be able to hear any car coming behind you. Yes. And also, like, wear reflective clothing. You can do that all you want. You can be in the road as much as you want at night, as long as I can see you. Yeah. More than as soon as you're there. I don't think I came even close to hitting them, but it made me nervous. Yeah, no, I get that. Completely. Yeah. So, continuing. So we're facing her, and she's running towards us. She's about to pass us on the driver's side, and we're waiting for her to pass so that we can drive away, and we don't have to worry about hitting her or getting in her way. Mm -hmm. As soon as she passes, my friend throws the car and drive and starts to take off and suddenly the runner is standing in front of the car what the fuck yeah this i was writing this and i was like oh holy shit (laughs) all this happened in about one second she passed the driver's side and tree saw her pass the car and as well and a second later she's in front of the car running in the opposite direction to go down a different street and just the way it happened It was just impossible for her to get from the back of the car to right in front of the car, where my friend basically had to slam on her brakes because she was just about to take off. She just vanished from where she was to in front of the car. And the other weird thing about it is my friend released the brakes, so she started to move forward a little bit when the girl happened to be right in front of the car. And when you're running and this car almost hits you and you're passing right in front of it, usually you would look and see what's going on But she did not. It's almost like she didn't know we were there. And she just kept going on like nothing happened and nothing was weird. And nothing was weird at all. I don't know, man. Uh, That's literally how they ended it. That's like, okay, thinking about shit like that really spooks me. Like, glitches in the Matrix. I was thinking more of a ghost that's attached to that road that can't interact with anybody outside of what they were doing when they died. Oh. So they just run back and forth down that stretch. Oh, that's a little sad. Yeah. I, like, there are a lot of glitch in the Matrix theories and, like, things that me and other people have witnessed, like, passing the same fucking car on the highway twice. Yeah. And, like, the interior or the person inside looks very similar or the same. I'm going... Or, like... So, what freaks me out about that is, like, am I the glitch? Do they know that they're a glitch? Are they as conscious, and are their thoughts as intricate as mine? Yeah. I could, yeah, that would freak a lot of anyone out. Is that person, does that person have the same level of personhood as me, or do I have less of a level of personhood than them? Yeah. Like, I always wonder, have I ever been a glitch for someone else? Are these, like, real people, or are they just... Bots? Bugs. Bugs on the code. Yeah. Yeah, spooky. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, spooky. But I really, I liked the story a lot. It was very spooky. Yes, I did too. Thank you to that friend. Yes, thank you so much for sharing. Again, I really appreciate it. Okay, so this one I got from my mother. Um, And I've heard this story as I was growing up from both her and my grandma, like her mom. And basically what this is about is my grandpa's mother passed away, unfortunately. But everyone in the family kind of knew this thing that you would keep change in the sock drawer. That's where the money was kept. Mm -hmm. And you dug around and apparently this grandma was particular about like going through there. And after she passed away... Her, uh, husband, I believe, heard someone rustling around in the sock drawer again, like the grandmother had used to, looking, like, for spare change. And then my grandmother, my mom's mom, had a dream where this grandma asked how everyone was doing, and this is after she had passed away, Mm -hmm. and my grandmother said that everyone was doing okay. And she left, like the dream ended, and the grandpa never heard the rattling in the sock drawer again. Mm. Yeah. So I've always kind of believed in ghosts because of that. That one's really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. 
She wasn't looking for spare change. She was looking for them. Danny. Uh, she definitely was looking for spare change, even as a ghost. But she looked out for them at the very end. Yeah. Because that's what she would do in life, is, like, dig through for spare change. But it's nice to see a ghost keep a habit that's not weird, and, like, everyone is aware of the habit, so it's easily identifiable. That is actually really sweet and comforting in some ways. Yeah. Because that just says that. that that's her. And she was yeah. sneaking around to make sure everyone was okay. That is so sweet. Yeah. So, thank you, Mama. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Um, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. Do you want it? It's fucking Friday. Uh, what? <laughs> it's fucking Friday. Thank you, Stacy, for you and yours. Uh, do you want to do the outros again? Yeah, I can try. I mean, it's up to you. Hold on. Let me open it up. Thanks for listening to Everyday Nightmares. If there was anything in this episode that may have triggered you, first of all, we apologize. Second of all, we would love it if you would inform us of what triggered you specifically so that we may provide a warning for it in future episodes in order to keep you safe from any harm that could come to you via listening to this podcast. If you have corrections, questions, or additions, please let us know, and if you have stories of your own, you can email us at everydaynightmarespodcast at gmail.com. Please include your pronouns, and if you would like to have your name read on air in our mini so it's please sign your name at the bottom. You can follow us on Twitter at EDNightmares, Instagram at Everyday Nightmares Podcast, and TikTok at Everyday Nightmares Pod. If you like the podcast, don't forget to like, rate, review, comment, subscribe, or follow wherever you are listening. It is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support and get a shout out on air, visit our Patreon. You can get access to bonus episodes, bloopers, and even have the opportunity to pick your own episode topic and or case. So depending on where you are, good night. Good morning. And And happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday to you, Stacey.